Thank you very much indeed for joining us and bearing with us. And welcome to the Global Innovation Forum. And we're now going to go into our first uh, session, which is uh, Achieve Your National Development Priorities Through Digital Transformation. It's going to be moderated by Ms. Dorian Bogdan, who is the Director of the Telecommunication Development Bureau at uh, ITU. So Doreen, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Max. Uh, excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Uh, before we dive into the panel, maybe I could lay out a few house rules. Uh, the sessions will be brought to you live on, on Swapcard. Uh, use the chat to comment. There's a Q&A box and you can, of course, connect with each other directly. Uh, we encourage you to use the hashtag, hashtag rediscover innovation to join the conversation. And if you wish to listen to one of the other UN languages, you can simply click on, on the link uh, at the bottom of, of your screen. Um, and with that, I really want to, uh, to welcome you all. It's a great pleasure for me to moderate this first session, uh, which will take us on an inspiring journey. Uh, we will hear the experiences of a number of countries on their aspirations for the digital transformation of society. Uh, this new normal brought about by COVID-19 requires different actions than in the past. And what we're going to hear during this next session is about how these countries have adapted their approaches, highlighting their challenges as well as opportunities. I would like to recognize our panel today. Uh, we have uh, five panelists with us. We also have two video interventions. Uh, I'm delighted that we have today Her Excellency uh, Senator, the Honorable Allison West, the Minister of Public Administration and Digital Transformation of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, we also have Her Excellency Li Linkeng, uh, the Minister of Post and Telecommunications of Cameroon. Uh, we have His Excellency Dr. Carol Solibar, who is the Deputy State Secretary. Uh, for Info Communications of the Hungarian Ministry for Innovation and Technology. He will address us through a video message. We also have His Excellency uh, Dr. Ali al Shidhani, uh, the Undersecretary of the Ministry for Communications and Information Technology of the Sultanate of Oman. We have His Excellency Gregorio Honasan, the Secretary for the Department of Information and Communication Technology, who will also join us through a video message. We have Madam Claude uh, Borna, who is the Managing Director and Chief Innovation Officer of City Development Agency in Benin. And finally, we have Mr. Cesar Contreras Gonzalez, the Director General and Coordinator of Technological Development of the Secretariat of Communications and Transporta Transportation of Mexico. Uh, fabulous lineup of, of participants. And we will basically have a first round of, of questions and then come back for a second round. I do hope at the end we can have some, some interactions uh, based on the input we may receive from the audience. And so with that, I'm going to hand over to our first panelist uh, from Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, in pursuit of the diversification of the economy of Trinidad and Tobago, uh, your government has been investing in key sectors such as food, tourism, and, and technology. Uh, we understand that one of the key strategies is to really leverage ICTs to boost these key sectors that have strong potential for employment. And with this context, it would be great to hear from you about the digital transformation efforts taking place in Trinidad and Tobago. Senator, the Honorable Allison West, over to you, please. If we could try to do three minutes for the first round, and then, as I said, we'll come back. Uh, Senator, please, over to you. Sure, good morning, Madam Chair, morning colleagues and all. Trinidad and, um, and Tobago is a small island state of 1.3 million people. COVID, as with many other places in the world, put us into a bit of a tailspin. We realized that also we, that although we had been incurring a lot of ICT spend, 
to transform the public service in the past, we had not done it efficiently. We had not done it effectively. So for example, we weren't able to easily identify who our vulnerable people were during COVID who needed the help. We weren't able to easily access health records at the special health facilities that were set up to deal with the COVID patients. We weren't easily able to switch to a distance learning platform. And some people had challenges working from home. So what it did is that it woke the government up to realize that we needed to transform how we treated with our digital transformation um, to heighten the profile as is evident from the renaming of my ministry and to change the governance structure so that there was an overarching body ensuring interoperability, ensuring connectivity between ministries, exchange of information, prioritizing the digital spend. So this is what we have, been, have done and we are continuing to do. We have two key mandates over the next couple of years. One is to introduce an e-identity, which will allow us to more easily identify who our vulnerable citizens are, what their needs are, so that we can more efficiently help them and service them. And two, to digitalize the public service, which is which we recognize is not just a conversion of records to a digital platform, but using the digital platform to transform how we treat with our citizens, to make the service more citizen-centric. And so it is made up of a, a, a slew of programs, which includes change management, it includes educating our public service, servants, transforming processes, looking at our legislation. So it's quite a tall task ahead of us, but we are very excited to embark on this road because we see so much potential. COVID-19 has a negative and a positive for us in the digital space. Negative in that there are so many countries um, competing for limited resources. But it's a positive because, as this forum de demonstrates, because we're all on this journey together, it gives us the opportunity to share ideas, learn from each other, and try to avoid the mistakes that, may, that, that some of us are, have made in the past and maybe are still making. So as I said, this is a very exciting time for us. We are looking forward to moving to making quant a quantum leap in Trinidad and Tobago in the digital space. And I look forward to our discussion this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that um, quantum leap. I, I love that. And also for, for highlighting that important focus that you have also on your, your citizen-centric services. Um, look forward. We'll come back to you. I want to hear more. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we will now turn to our next distinguished panelist, uh, Her Excellency, joining us from, from Cameroon. Uh, Cameroon is known for its Silicon Mountain, uh, which offers a, a nurturing environment for digital innovation similar to Silicon Valley. Uh, ITU was recently a partner of the African Telecommunication Union's Innovation uh, Challenge, and there was a remarkable winner from Cameroon, a young woman with a solution called FarmGuard. Uh, so we're really excited, Excellency, to have you joining us today. Uh, and we look forward to hearing more about how Cameroon is helping uh, to develop its ecosystem and to, to nurture such talents. Excellency, uh, over to you, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Moderator and Director of Telecommunication Development Bureau for giving me the floor. Your Excellencies, distinguished personalities, ladies and gentlemen, here we are again at our annual rendezvous to share experiences of the individual journeys that our countries have traveled in the last 12 months within a globalized and interconnected world. This year's meeting, which is currently holding via video conferencing, for the first time is an indication of the incredible mutation that the world has undergone in recent times imposed by the COVID-19 pandemic. Thanks to the ability of our global industry to find solutions to most of our problems here, 
We are geographically dispersed across the globe, but united across this common digital platform to address some of the challenges that we must overcome together in order to build an interconnected and inclusive world where no one is left behind. Yes, indeed, no one should be left behind. Despite being a slogan that has informed our industry, commitment and strategies in the last few years, this slogan has never been so critical as it is today. COVID-19 has taught us that the world is truly a global village wherein a virus that started in one locality can quickly cover the entire globe, causing untold loss of lives and livelihoods. The virus made no difference between rich and poor nations, as well as between cities and remote villages. Telecommunications and ICTs became the live wire that kept our economies growing in the dark of a pandemic and the most reliable social link that kept us together in a world where social distancing became a prescription. We must ensure that no one is left behind within the industry in general and at the BDT in particular, so that together with effort from each country, we can leverage connectivity to defeat this unseen enemy and to better prepare ourselves for future challenges, business models where the winner takes it all are no longer sustainable. Madam moderator, ladies and gentlemen, receive warm greetings from His Excellency, Mr. Paul Bia, the head of state who has engaged our country on a trajectory of building one of the fastest growing and most diversified ICT markets in the sub-region. We have embarked on a project of densifying our national and international connectivity with the commissioning of 400 C cables, 20,000 kilometers of optic fiber, metro network links, satellite links, and data centers. With the help of our international partners, we are currently revising our legal, regulatory, and institutional frameworks so as to better adapt our country to ongoing market challenges brought about by convergence. I can stop there and thank you. Thank you, Excellency. And indeed, we are all united across common digital platforms, as you rightly noted. And, and thank you for stressing that, that no one should be, should be left behind. And as you said, that, that, that slogan has never been so critical than it, is, than it is today. Thank you for that message and look forward to coming back to you to hear more. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will now turn to, uh, to a, a, a video address. Uh, joining us from, from Hungary, we have an address from His Excellency, uh, Dr. Karoli Solimar. Um, if we could hear his intervention, please. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's my pleasure to give this video address for the ITU Global Innovation Forum. My name is Karel Balázs Sojban. I'm the Deputy State Secretary for Digitalization of the Hungarian Ministry for Innovation and Technology. Ever since Hungary hosted ITU Telecom World in 2015 in Budapest, Hungary and ITU started to have a common history of collaboration in driving growth for digital ecosystem and innovation. This effort has led to many joint opportunities at the VSIS, the Regional Development Forum for Europe, and last year in 2019 at the ITU Telecom World back in Budapest, where we co-organized the first version of the Global Innovation Forum as a global ecosystem track. This year is particularly special. The world is facing a global pandemic, which has a major impact on our economies. The coronavirus pandemic is a humanitarian crisis, but also a catalyst for changes on scale. 
ITU and Hungary continue to work together on the 2020 ITU Innovation Challenges and train mentors for this occasion. In Hungary, there is a strong focus on the development of a well-functioning digital ecosystem. We do our best to highlight the role of innovation and entrepreneurship. One of the goals of the ITU's Connect 2030 Agenda is to ensure that by 2023, ITU member states have innovation policies fostering ICT-centric innovation. In this regard, let me tell you some words about the Hungarian best practices and the so-called input program. Several years ago, Hungary recognized that it is of utmost importance to build entrepreneurship and innovation policies into the country's existing ICT policies and strategies. One of these initiatives, which we are very proud of, is the Input Program, the Hungarian government's program designed to develop an ICT startup ecosystem in rural areas that could easily grow global later. Input has a unique and comprehensive service portfolio that could support idea owners all along their way from developing an idea to entering international markets. The uniqueness of Input lies in its approach and methodology. Input is building on personal presence, individual guidance and training. Input program reacts to the needs and challenges of the here and now on a local level. This program was also recognized by the ITU as a regional best practice and contributed to our collaboration. We think ITU's innovation program is much aligned with our objective of connecting ecosystems so that innovators can find access to resources across various countries. This is essential to unlock opportunities for economies, make it small or big. We have proposed winning programs in Europe in the past and will continue to offer such practice sharing also in the future. Our ministry is happy to partner with ITU and other member states to accelerate the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. I am honoured to make this video intervention and I am sorry that I could not attend the session live. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the leadership of ITU for offering a great opportunity to showcase Hungary's achievements so far in digital ecosystem development and for the continued partnership in this global effort. Thank you once again and stay safe. And our thanks go to, to Dr. Carely for, uh, for that important message. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we will turn to, to our next uh, panelist, uh, Undersecretary uh, Dr. Al Shidhani, joining us from Oman. Uh, sir, we know Oman has its 2040 agenda, um, where you're trying to, to set out to develop a, a post-oil economy. Uh, this requires, of course, the development of a strong digital ecosystem and strong innovation programs and initiatives. We're really looking forward to, to hearing uh, about how, how you're going about that, your insights on this ambition and the steps that you're taking to, uh, to reach this goal. Dr. Ali, over to you, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Doreen, and uh, thank you, distinguished speakers. It's my pleasure to uh, speak in front of you today uh, and uh, share with you the Oman experience in digital transformation. Uh, digital transformation is not new for Oman. Oman have taken several steps to cement digital transformation in the country, starting with liber liberalization of the telecom sector, uh, and uh, that enabled telecommunication companies to come to Oman and to provide telecom uh, services that are uh, fundamental for any digital transformation initiative, uh, including fixed mobile and fiber uh, services. Uh, in addition to that, uh, back in 2006, Oman have established an IT information technology authority responsible uh, to roll out e-government uh, services and uh, to uh, uh, transform government services to e uh, to to exist in the uh, virtual space, and that uh, accelerated the level of services uh, provided to uh, citizens. In addition to all that, Oman have also uh, established uh, different entities, uh, such as a specific unit for broadband, 
uh, to lay down fiber across the country uh, to ensure that connectivity reaches every, uh, you know, every city and every village. Recently, Oman have also invested in uh, startups by uh, establishing venture capital uh, companies uh, that have uh, spread a lot of uh, positive vibes in the community and encouraged so many startups or so many people to start uh, technology new initiatives and technology new companies in different uh, sectors. Uh, fast forward to today, uh, where all these uh, digital initiatives are now uh, look, are being looked at under a governance, a single governance, a one umbrella, uh, with the establishment of the Ministry of Transportation, Communication, and Information Technology. So all these initiatives are now uh, better uh, synergized and aligned, uh, and. Uh, uh, the different entities in, in Oman are working together to uh, facilitate uh, a, a digital transformation, uh, to enable technology startups, and to enrich innovation in the country. Uh, all these entities are also uh, aligning with other entities in executing different strategies, such as Oman e-government strategy, uh, such as the broadband strategy, and, and the Oman National Innovation uh, Strategy. And as you rightly said, Oman is now uh, moving forward to execute Oman Vision 2040. And Oman Vision 2040 is a very ambitious vision for the country uh, in the post-oil era, where uh, Oman will dive, will looking uh, seriously to diversify the uh, income in the country uh, away from traditional economies such as the uh, oil and gas economy towards knowledge-based economy in which technology innovation play a pivotal role and for that uh, and for such an ecosystem to be effective uh, uh, there is uh, you know uh, coherence between technology governance technology infrastructure technology innovation, and technology capabilities. And these are the four pillars uh, that we think will propel the country forward and uh, will uh, help the country to uh, establish a uh, digital economy, a digital economy that is based on the strength that we already have in the country in areas such as cybersecurity, in uh, the uh, uh, unique geographical location of the country in which the country is in the uh, trade route of the world. And so we want to leverage that uh, to develop the country into a digital trade hub in the region moving forward. So thank you very much for the uh, opportunity to speak and looking forward to uh, exchange more uh, um, uh, uh, views and recommendations uh, during the session. Terrific. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ali, and, and certainly look forward to coming to coming back to you for, for some of those important points that you have, uh, you have noted. Thank you for that. We're now going to turn to Madam Claude Bornha. She's going to share with us her insights on how Benin has responded to COVID-19 and what um, ecosystem builders uh, like yourself, have had to do to help their country navigate this new normal. Uh, Claude, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Doreen, and um, and thank you to um, ITU for um, giving us the opportunity to um, to share what we're doing and to um, and to learn from um, from other countries. Um, so SEMECD, which is um, the, um, the ecosystem that we're building in, in Benin, is a, is a flagship project of the government. Um, and the goal is to improve um, education, youth employment performances, and also um, be the catalyst for a knowledge-based economy, which we, we just heard um, from, um, from Oman that they were uh, on the same journey. 
Um, so what we're doing at CMSCD is we bring together leading edge education programs, research centers, and incubators so that we can accelerate that um, innovation journey. Um, so currently we have programs in computer science. We have a, a school that has dedicated programs in uh, design of mobile applications and online platform. Um, we also have an incubator um, that was developed in collaboration with, um, with PwC, the consulting firm, um, that can bring all their expertise, their tools, and their global networks to, um, to support startups. And, um, and what we, our mantra is really to uh, promote innovation made in Africa and, uh, and develop local solutions. So um, when, when the, the crisis um, started, um, I remember it was back in March um, when the first cases were announced in Benin. Um, we immediately um, set up with our partners, uh, UNFPA and, um, and UNICEF. Um, we decided that we would bring everyone together um, in a task force to, to really develop local solutions and that were adapted to our environment um, and our issues um, to fight the, the, the virus. Um, and this initiative was complementing the actions that were taken by the government. Um, and it was really about driving innovative solutions locally and reinforcing as well the resilience of our local players. Um, so I'm gonna give you just a couple of examples of things that were um, developed. Um, there was a, a startup called Xover that developed the contract tracing application. Um, but the, the beauty of it is um, today this application is actually being adapted to be used by UNFPA um, in other health programs. And, um, and they benefited from actually funding from UNFPA to be able to do that. Um, another um, uh, program that was, um, that was benefited from uh, the task force was Kea Medicals. It's an online e-health platform. Um, that provide teleconsultation and they developed a, a COVID-19 self-diagnostic system. Um, and today they're working with the Ministry of Health on um, digitalizing the uh, screening process for the test. Um, and our solutions were also um, targeting the younger generations that, you know, at the start of the pandemic, they weren't really taking it seriously. So um, we came up with a, a campaign that was um, heavily relayed on social media and, and young influencers, uh, WhatsApp group, Facebook, and other, another platform to reach millions of young people. Um, and there was also some funding to mobilize young associations, um, youth association to relay the message in their local communities. Um, and we also worked with UNICEF to, um, to do a, a, an online hackathon um, so that we could accelerate at least 10 local innovations in um, distance learning, um, digital communication, um, and also um, a platform where um, people could come and share um, knowledge of um, what was going on. So I think overall, um, what we've learned through um, that experience with the task force is that by collaborating and that bringing different actors together. So we had, of course, the, the you know the development agencies I've mentioned and the UN agencies, um, the startups, the academic institutions, um, also private sector got involved. Is that really when we put everyone together, um, we can develop um, effective solutions. Um, however, however, I need to say that um, support is still needed um, so that we can. I think we may have lost Claude. Well, let's hope that we can come back to, to Claude. That was such an important message. We lost her on the however <laughs> suspense there. So let's hope that we, we get Claude back. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I think we can now move to uh, another video address from His Excellency uh, Secretary Gregorio uh, Honasan II from the Philippines. If we could hear from His Excellency, please. Members of the International Telecommunications Union, distinguished members 
of the panel, participants from the public and private sectors, as well as the academy, friends, good morning. COVID-19 made an unprecedented and devastating impact on the global economy. Probably the biggest economic shock the world has experienced in decades. As countries enforced lockdowns, community quarantines, and other restrictions, many businesses closed temporarily and permanently. Millions of people worldwide lost their jobs and domestic economies plummeted. In the Philippines, many months of stricter community quarantine took their toll on our domestic economy. In a statement by National Economic and Development Authority, or NEDA, Acting Secretary Carl Kendrick Chua, he reported that COVID-19 and the ensuing quarantine have led to a 9% contraction of the Philippine economy in the first semester. Consequently, with 75% of the economy forced to shut down, unemployment reached a high of 17.7% in May this year with 7 million people unemployed. Nonetheless, with the gradual easing up of community quarantine in the Philippines, we are also seeing the slow recovery of our economy. With the advent of the so-called new normal, defined by an increased dependence on digital technology, we recognize the need to re-strategize and refocus our priorities moving forward to adapt to and thrive amidst the demands of this new reality. In a report released by the World Bank and NEDA last October 5, entitled A Better Normal Under COVID-19, Digitalizing the Philippine Economy Now, the rapid adoption of digital technology was identified as one key solution to recover from the COVID-19 crisis. The Philippine government likewise recognizes the urgent need for and the importance of digital transformation and strengthening the country's digital economy to help the country and the Filipino people bounce back from the devastating consequences of the pandemic. It is important to note, however, that even before the pandemic, the Philippine government, through the Department of Information and Communications Technology, or DICT, the primary policy planning, coordinating, implementing, an administrative entity of the executive branch of government that develops and promotes the national ICT development agenda as mandated by Republic Act 10844 has been leading the country towards digital transformation to keep up with an increasingly digital world. The Philippines' vision of a digital future is not something new. It has simply been brought into sharper focus by the ongoing crisis. With this goal of improving the country's digital economy, the DICT implements both immediate and long-term sustainable solutions, focusing on improving ICT infrastructure, enabling e-government, and strengthening ICT capacity development among Filipinos. Let's talk of connect. Let me end by greeting one and all. Maraming salamat, mabuhay, and God bless all of us. Very inspiring remarks from His, His Excellency uh, Secretary Gregorio. Uh, and indeed, uh, I think COVID has, has forced all of us to sharpen our, our focus on, on digital as we look to, to recovery, and as he said, a, a better normal through digitization. So I'm now going to turn to, uh, to Cesar, and then we will come back, I think, to Claude, who's reconnected. So if we could go to Cesar Contreras Gonzalez uh, to tell us how, how Mexico is navigating the pandemic uh, and, and future crises by leveraging technology. Cesar, over to you, please. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, I am very honored to participate in this session. Uh, thank you very much as well for uh, for the invitation and the consideration of 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 of, of Mexico. So I think it's no uh, question that the COVID pandemic has taught us all many many lessons. Uh, it's been a historic uh, series of events that we have all been facing, and definitely we have uh, we we have uh, found that technology has been an amazing tool 
to actually make uh, make uh, well face the, this this uh, current situation, and to to keep the world uh, and our economies up and running. Uh, Мне сказать, что для начала нужно заниматься обеспечением подсоединения. Если бы мы этого не делали на протяжении последних лет, мы бы ничего не добились. Мы должны помнить, что нужно вместе с этим принимать и другие меры направленные на то, чтобы у людей был доступ к этим новым технологиям. Поэтому вот самое главное – это демократизация ИКТ. Мы должны в условиях обеспечения подсоединений доступа сделать все необходимое, чтобы использовать этот новый потенциал в полной мере. Это применимо как к нынешнему кризису, так и к возможным кризисам в будущем. Очень часто представители молодежи являются застрельщиками этой инновационной деятельности. Поэтому очень важно, чтобы население страны по-настоящему овладело этой технологией. Это новый стимул для творчества. Кибербезопасность – это нечто, что можно пояснить, приведя аналогию с нашим физическим. However, uh, we, we think that uh, it's very important to, to, to provide all the different elements for people to, to as in cybersecurity, to stay safe, as in technology, uh, in, the, in, the, in the bigger picture, to, to make the most of the different tools. Um, in the Ministry of uh, Communications and Transportation of Mexico, we have been pushing for democratizing technology. And you know, going back to the cybersecurity example, we created cybersecurity um, specific guides for, for uh, telecommuting and for education, knowing that people in the educational sector and as well as in the job market, especially medium, small uh, enterprises, really didn't uh, have enough knowledge or were not 100% prepared to make use of, of technology as, as the COVID pandemic forced us to, to do all of a sudden. So in that sense and following a, a co-creation approach, uh, we, we, we totally agree that co-creation is the way to go Uh, so uh, it is very important for us to develop and implement solutions, not only in the health area in the future, but also in other very important, very relevant uh, sectors to promote economic development and reduce the impact of future crisis. Uh, Agenda 2030, and that has already been said, uh, clearly states that we should leave no one behind. And in Mexico, we are committed to, to leaving no one behind uh, since we're undergoing a transformation to make sure that historically marginalized communities and peoples are also being part of development. And that's what, what, what I wanted to, to, to round up, you know, when I said that uh, we, we should uh, take into account people and technology for people, not technology just for the sake of technology itself. So thank you very much again. And uh, we're looking forward to the second uh, 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 space to participate. Thank you so much, uh, Cesar, for that uh, for that important message and sharing the experiences of, of, of Mexico uh, and the importance of not just training people to be users, but also to, to be innovators and how you're making efforts to democratize uh, technology and the importance of co-creation. Great messages there. Um, Claude, I'm going to come back to you. We lost you uh, when you got to the however. You were talking about... Um, Uh, the importance of, of how together we can develop things. And then you said, however, and we lost you. <laughs> It was linked to collaboration. Claude, if you're, if, you're, if you're with us, perhaps we can turn back to you, Claude. Yes. Yes, thank you. Apologies for um, my technical issues. Um, I was saying, and, and it, it echoes um, the, the previous speakers, that however, support is still needed and is very significant. Um, to help our startups and our innovators um, build resilience. And 
Um, I think this will require a very unprecedented level of collaboration between the government, the, the technical and financial partners, um, the NGOs are, that are on the ground, the um, private organizations. Um, and maybe if, um, if I may say in, in closing, I mean, that crisis is terrible, but let's not, you know, I think it's Wilson Churchill who said, never let a good crisis go to waste. Um, let's look at it and let's look at what we can learn so that um, we also put in, in, um, in place the right environment uh, to enable local innovation because it's definitely needed um, in our economies. It's definitely needed to support also the, um, the, the SMEs and, and the startups that can play a significant role in the development of our countries. Yeah. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you for that, Claude. And, and indeed, your last point about the enabling environment is, is so critical, not only for sustainability, but also for, for investment as well. Thank you. So now we're going to go back to, to um, Senator Allison West from Trinidad and, and Tobago. And perhaps if you, could, if you could maybe elaborate a little bit further on Trinidad and Tobago's vision and the strategies uh, leading to this inclusive uh, digital transformation of, of society. If we can turn back to you, please. Did we, did we lose Senator West? Sorry, I was muted. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> yes, as a couple of my co-panelists said, we are also um, determined to ensure that no one is left behind. Um, as it, in respect of the lockdown, what we meant by that was ensuring that with terminations from employment and so on, that no one went hungry, that no one lived without the basic necessities. In respect of the digital world, we want to ensure that everybody has coverage and everybody has access to digital services. So we did things like provided additional spectrum free of charge during the lockdown to the telecommunications um, companies to, to ensure that everybody had coverage. Notwithstanding that there were gaps in the coverage, so we are broadening our um, access by building out additional Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi spaces throughout the country in high traffic areas. We, have, we are increasing the number of access centers or internet cafes that the government is operating to give people who cannot afford it access to, to um, equipment, free Wi-Fi, teaching them how to use the equipment and how to access government services, giving them a space to research and get together. We um, have the service providers coming on board with that because they are also using their corporate social responsibility programs to introduce free Wi-Fi and to introduce um, access centers. We realized during the lockdown that Traditionally, government has operated as a separate unit. We found that collaboration with the private sector, with academia, took us so much further that people were willing and eager to come on board and work with the government to ensure that together we can all progress. And we are continuing to keep that model in place. We have set up, as I said, a new governance structure for the digitalization of the economy that continues to involve private sector and academia. We think that model works well and we're going to continue with it. Even with all of this, we realize that although in the past, most households would have one um, ICT piece of equipment, a laptop or whatever, and they could manage with that, having regard to the fact that so many people were working from home and so many people were schooling from home, it was no longer sufficient to have one or two devices per household, and that every individual needed an, a device essentially. So we removed taxes on the importation of these items to make them more affordable. And where even with the removal of the taxes, they will continue to be unaffordable to students. We are 
arranging to ensure that all our students who cannot afford are given a device. The private sector, again, is working with us. They have contributed a significant number, and the government is filling the gap with the others. So the intention is to ensure that everybody who needs one has a device, everybody has access to, um, to broadband. And so with that, we can all participate in the digital economy. We have done some work in the, to encourage the private sector involvement as well, but if you get a chance to come back to me, I will, I can go more fully into that. Thank you. Thank you. Terrific. Great to hear about all of the, the, the things that you have done to facilitate and keep connectivity going during this crisis. We will now turn, uh, turn again to Her Excellency from, from Cameroon. Uh, Excellency, if you could share uh, some ICT ecosystem development initiatives in Cameroon that are fostering entrepreneurial activities and really fueling ICT innovations. And if, if I think we'll try to keep the, the next interventions, if we could try to two minutes each. Uh, Excellency, please, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam Moderator. Convergence is causing intense mutations within our industry with a continuous evolution towards a single network capable of delivering a spectrum of services to the market, thereby compelling companies, whether similar or diverse, to come together in order to consolidate or enhance capability for the delivery of increasingly complex and diverse services to satisfy consumer demands. This comes with a lot of challenges. The following initiatives, which are far from exhaustive, outline our approach to foster an entrepreneurial and innovative ICT environment in Cameroon. First, converge regulation. Our case strategy is to build a regulatory framework that ensures interoperability of different networks to provide an experience that meets customer requirements. Regulation that integrates new players who must be subject to cross-sector regulation in order to build trust between all actors, create a sustainable ecosystem, and ensure a holistic transformation wherein responsibilities are fully established. We are currently working with our international partners to achieve this goal. Secondly, security. Emerging business models require the use of customer information by converged companies who are sometimes located several miles away in different countries in order to protect our citizens and our way of life and our economy. We are embarking on developing cybersecurity initiatives which during our past meetings, we have asked the ITU to champion international consensus to ensure the security of networks and personal data. The training and capacity building. If our country is not to be left behind, we must ensure that our youth and economic operators are not only maximizing the use of ICT as business enablers, but also become technology creators and content markets. Training is the cornerstone of our strategy. And in the next few months, we will be rolling out a multi-complex and multi-million dollar cyber park, which will incubate and mature our youth in tech entrepreneurship. The complex will also be used to train our youth in emerging technologies such as intelligent artificial, robotics, internet of things, distributed ledger, and much more. The last but not the least is celebrate achievements. We organize many national competitions, among which is the National Innovation Week crowned 
by the, the price of a head of state. This is intended to reward excellence and spark creativity and innovation is what we are doing. Thank you. Thank you so much and, and congratulations on those many, many achievements. Thank you for, for sharing that. Um, so now we'll turn to, to His Excellency, Dr. Ali. If you could share with us a little more about how Amman envisages uh, be really becoming a, a digital leader in, in the region. Excellency, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, indeed, uh, becoming a digital leader takes uh, uh, you know, important and courageous decisions. Uh, and uh, there are some prerequisites for that to happen. One of them is strengthening international collaboration and international relations with international bodies. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and that is something that Oman has been doing for some time. Uh, Oman is collaborating with different international organizations, including the ITU. And uh, I think, uh, as you all know, uh, Oman is hosting the ITU Cybersecurity Center for the Arab region here in Oman. And uh, Oman have ranked fourth in cybersecurity in ITU cybersecurity index. And uh, we are looking forward as well to collaborate further with ITU in uh, developing an, an, uh, an innovation landscape of Oman uh, to identify the uh, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of the current innovation ecosystem in Oman. Uh, in partnership with ITU and to identify the way forward uh, in uh, innovation. So international collaboration is something that we take uh, very seriously uh, for in our digital transformation uh, journey. And uh, speaking of a journey, uh, Vision 2030, as I mentioned before, is our ultimate destination where we want Oman uh, to become a nation uh, that uh, produces technology rather than predominantly consumes uh, technology. And uh, in that, we are focusing in uh, enabling digital transformation in different sectors uh, that Oman is uh, strong in. Uh, for example, in the logistics sector, the tourism sector, the mining sector, uh, and the aviation sector. So uh, Oman have identified, uh, as well as manufacturing sector. So Oman have identified these sectors. Uh, these are the economic diversification sectors for the country. And uh, digital transformation is a key driver uh, for us uh, and for the country uh, to uh, advance in these sectors. And uh, a snippet of this was exemplified during COVID-19. So COVID-19 is uh, uh, obviously a pandemic with devastating effects and devastating outcome all across the globe, but it also had its uh, you know, uh, advantages. Uh, it accelerated digital transformation. It accelerated uh, the, uh, uh, the establishment of digital startups that uh, you know have transformed lives in Oman. Uh, so many digital startups, you know, started operating during the the, the pandemic to provide means for people to uh, to buy goods online, fruits, vegetable, fish. Uh, other startups started working in uh, 3D printing to uh, manufacture ventilators and other PPP equipments. Uh, AI-based solutions started uh, to pop up during the pandemic to uh, predict different patterns, uh, uh, to help diagnose uh, the uh, uh, COVID-19 symptoms, and so on. So uh, the future is bright, uh, but uh, there are fundamentals that needs or some, let's say, maybe some uh, uh, challenges that needs to be tackled. Among them is the collaboration between industry, government, and academia. Uh, this triple helix has to be uh, for us to become a, a producing nation. Uh, in addition uh, to all that and to conclude, technology is not 
the end game. The end game should be human prosperity. So we want to use technology uh, to serve humanity. So all our technology advancement have to be human centric. So uh, uh, how can technology be used for good uh, rather than uh, you know be used uh, for uh, 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 for evil, if I may say? Uh, so 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 that's it. And looking forward for further engagement. Terrific. Thank you so much for that. And we also look, look forward to uh, continued uh, engagement. And, and thank you for the sort of optimism. Good to start a, a Monday optimism. Thank you for that. And indeed, the future is bright, let's say. And we have challenges, and we need to face them together. Thank you for that. I'm going to turn back uh, to uh, Cesar and Claude. And we only have a couple of minutes left. So I'm going to ask you both the same question. If you could each share one example of challenges stakeholders can face in trying to get the to 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 get the digital ecosystem collaborating and innovating, if you could try to do that in 90 seconds each, can I go to Cesar first? So one example, Cesar. Sure, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so uh, definitely meaningful connectivity, as as I mentioned in my previous intervention, will require innovation and ecosystem. Uh, that works to unlock the potential of communities. Now the question becomes how to foster that innovation uh, to occur in the first place. So it is fundamental to have the right uh, fora for stakeholders uh, to discuss and agree on the next steps that foster that collaboration, that innovation, and the creation of partnerships across public and private actors. Here in Mexico, uh, uh, last year, we started working towards the creation of something that we call the Observatory of Digital Technologies and Public Policy Trends. This is uh, a project that uh, I submitted last year uh, as part of this ITU Innovation Challenge. It was one of the winning ideas. And we have been working towards the implementation of this, of this project, which we consider fundamental to enable the ecosystem and all the actors in the ecosystem to participate uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the collaboration that is so necessary to promote and foster this, this, this change to happen in the first place. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay here. I know that time is a little bit short and I'm gonna pass the floor to, to Claude. Thank you again. Terrific, Claude, over to you, please. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm going to stay on the same theme and, and I think let's use ICT to actually enable better collaboration and um, information sharing. I mean, just today we've learned so much about what's happening in other countries and, um, and there's some best press practice sharing that actually should be done uh, more often. And why not create a platform, um, an online platform like you know what we're doing here, but maybe more structured and more regular so that we can actually exchange information and also enable at another level our startups to exchange information and get best practice so that we don't have to repeat mistakes, but only you know um, take what works and take it further. So um, I think we have the tools to do that. Um, it's not complicated. Even something like Zoom is already a great tool to do it. Um, let's um, let's set it up. Let's set it up. That's a that's a that's a great proposal. Thank you for that. Um, so the my colleagues have told me that I can go back around just for a, a 30 second uh, Twitter type uh, last intervention. Um, and maybe Alison, I go to you just like 30 second takeaway, if you if you can, uh, Senator, please. Uh, you're muted. Yes, I am. So what COVID has taught us is that life is fragile, things are fragile, and that we need to stop working in silos. We need to stop looking at our own individual needs and wants and work together as a unit to advance society. We have started doing that. The challenge is to keep that going. I thank you. Excellent, thank you for that. Um, over to Cameroon Minister Lili Kang, a, a short uh, 30 second takeaway, Minister. Thank you. Uh, no one should be left behind. The externalities of digital revolution should be inclusive based on openness, transparency, and frank collaboration between 
all actors in the value chain and nations for shared prosperity. Cameroon is determined to play its role. Thank you very much. Beautiful, I love it. <laughs> okay, now over to, to Dr. Ali, please. 30 seconds, sir. Sure, thank you very much. Uh, so it goes like this. Competitive economies are inclusive and digital first economies. Wow, very powerful, very powerful. Love that one too. Uh, Claude, over to you, please. This is really a call for uh, more collaborations between um, between all the, the different nations and um, and a push for government to really look at um, what their youth are doing um, and how um, innovative local solutions can really really make a great impact in um, in the development of our economies. Brilliant, thank you. And Cesar, over to you. Thirty seconds. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, two heads are better than one. Uh, there's no question about that. An innovation-driven digital transformation of society demands participation of all stakeholders, the population itself being one, if not the most important of all of them. So we should train our people to make the most of technology, but also to set the foundation for them to be the source of innovation and co-creation. Thanks. Terrific, thank you. Um, this has been amazing. Um, thank you all. What an incredible panel. Uh, so many good takeaways on stressing the importance of, of collaboration. We've heard some interesting uh, governance models that have now come into place in, in Trinidad and, and Tobago, in Oman, how you're moving forward on a governance side of digital transformation. We've heard the importance of being local when we think about the solutions. Uh, we've also heard it's not just the infrastructure, it's the services that go with it. It's the importance of capacity building the necessary skills, the need to always combine connectivity with, with other efforts, the importance of co-creation, the importance of engaging youth, absolutely. Um, and of course, inclusive. I think we, we heard over and over, leave no one behind and absolutely agree. We need to be inclusive about this. We need to have the right enabling environment in place. We need to be thinking about resilience. Uh, engaging the private sector, government, civil society, um, investors. Um, and what we have seen here is really that COVID has been, uh, has been an accelerator for connectivity. It's also been a, an accelerator for, uh, for innovation. And we've heard so many innovations today, um, which, is, which is really just, um, just incredible. Um, so thank you all, it's been, it's been terrific. Uh, I'd like to encourage everyone, stay with us, uh, attend the other sessions. Uh, you'll discover new insights about sustainability uh, and competitiveness of, of digital ecosystems. Use this as an opportunity to, to build your own know-how, uh, to learn good practices, and then to take them back and, and apply them in your own environments. Uh, a big thanks to, again, this amazing panel. Give them a virtual round of applause. And, um, and please note that the ITU uh, stands ready to help assist you uh, as you go on in, in your digital transformation journeys. Stay safe, stay healthy, and hope to see you face-to-face -face soon. Mm -hmm.